So you guys asked for it, so I'm gonna show it to you. My uh, video editing desk tour. It's not like one of those tours, you know, desk tours you see online where you have this desk randomly placed in the middle of a room and there's no cables and nothing. And it basically just looks very suspicious uh, and kind of hard to believe that somebody's actually using that for work. So this desk, like I said, I use this pretty much every day when I'm here in my studio, editing, you know, checking emails, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, doing visual effects, sound mixing too. That's why I got these two big, uh, nice speakers. Um, and it's uh, it's a little messy. Maybe I should have cleaned it up for this video, dusted it up. But you know what? I just I want you guys to see how it actually looks when I'm working. So I do try to keep my desk clean, but it's not like I can you know avoid having cables and things like that. But anyways, uh, let me first start maybe sort of with the desk. Fits perfectly in the corner of my office. That's the reason why I got it. It's not the most ideal desk. I will probably in the future upgrade to a desk that, uh, you know, that can, for example, go up and down. But this thing gets the job done. And what I mean by that is that it just, you know, fits in the corner of my office here, which was the ideal spot for, for me to put this, uh, you know, kind of editing workstation. Then the next thing, maybe let me just quickly talk about the computer that I'm using. This is an MSI desktop computer uh, that I actually did a full review of it. Uh, it was custom built for me by MSI and in that video on the full review, you can kind of find out all the specs and also how you guys can actually build a machine like that yourself because it has a whole like a kind of a guide on how to build it, what parts to order, all that stuff. I got this, been using it for over a year and I love it. It's an amazing computer, still like handles pretty much everything I throw at it. On top of the computer here, I got my headphone stand with my uh, two set of headphones. One is for me when I'm kind of monitoring and mixing audio. The other set of headphones is just for gaming. And by the way, my whole desktop is actually sitting on top of a case from Rogard, uh, which is actually to hold lenses. And it's a case that you can plug in and it keeps everything climate controlled. So you, you don't develop any fungus or things like that in your lenses. Uh, and then as you notice up here, I got my salted nuts. Great snack for when you're working. <laughs> now I, I like to have the desktop kind of facing this way. Uh, because this way I have the, the access to all the basically, you know, input output kind of ports on the back of my computer. So I can quickly access, plug in and, and unplug things that I need to. Uh, on top of that, I actually have uh, a little hub here for, uh, you know, it has three USB 3.0 uh, plugs. It also has a different uh, card reader so I can plug in my cards and I can offload footage. I uh, also have a CFAS 2.0 card reader up here. And this is all just vel Velcro to, you know, to the bottom here, so you can easily remove it uh, or attach it back uh, to the desk. The keyboard is actually a, a great keyboard, and it's not a keyboard that you'll probably know the company name. I don't even know it. It's NPET. What I love about this keyboard is it's an actual working keyboard. I mean, you can... You can smush this thing, you can throw it around, nothing will happen to it. it it's all metal pretty much, like the, the bottom here is uh, aluminum. It is a little bit heavy, but it's also very minimalistic in the sense that it's, it takes a very small amount of space, but it has these keys, as you'll notice, that really stick out. Uh, and there's actually a backlit, it has different colors and you can change the colors and the settings, not that I ever do that, but uh, when I'm working actually, or color grading, then I usually will have the lights uh, here pretty much off, so it's not going to be as bright as it is for this video. And so having the keyboard backlit really helps, and also for me, because I'm working with minimal desk space, uh, I wanted a keyboard that just takes up a minimal amount of space, and this way I can, you know, still comfortably put my hands on it. And, uh, and what I love about this keyboard is because the keys are so like really sticking out of the, the keyboard and it's easy to find it basically whenever I'm looking at the screen. Uh, so I, I don't have to kind of fumble around and be like, okay, which, where am I on the keyboard with the thing? Uh, you really feel it and you also feel every click. Like, you know, when you press each button, you know, you know that you've pressed it. Uh, so it's actually a really good keyboard. It's not wireless. I've tried various wireless keyboards. Uh, the same thing with the wireless mouse and I've always had problems like sometimes they would work then they wouldn't work it would disconnect it so this one is wired uh, and it actually has this nice threaded cord so it's kind of heavy duty and for me that's fine I don't mind having cables like I said this is a desk that I actually use every day for work so uh, it just not needs to work and I was getting so frustrated with different of uh, these wireless uh, keyboards and, and mouses that I was using that Finally, I just said no more, no more. Next thing up here you'll see is my tangent control surface. And what I use this for is basically when I'm color grading. So if I'm in DaVinci Resolve, I just go to my color panel. 
uh, and it's automatically configured. You know, you can kind of customize certain things that features about it, but pretty much what this is, uh, is it's instead of using, you know, these actual color wheels within the software, uh, and then you can only, at that point, if you're using a mouse to do that, you can only adjust one at a time. Well, it's kind of more intuitive when I'm looking up here. This is actually my monitor that I'll be usually looking at when I'm color grading. And I can this way just quickly adjust the lift, gamma, and gain without even looking down here. I just kind of really be creative, very kind of intuitive. And I can adjust all three of those at once. And so if you're going to be serious about editing, but especially color grading, I would say you get yourself a control surface. There's different options. I reviewed also the one from Blackmagic. It's great if you're going to be working in Resolve. Uh, this one will work in Resolve, Final Cut, you know, Premiere, um, and a few other programs too you can use it in. Um, but, you know, the, I got this one not because it's the best control surface, but it's the smallest one. <laughs> That's really why. And I, again, I'm working with limited desk space. Now, because this control surface doesn't have all the buttons and things like that, like some of the other ones uh, have, uh, that's why I also have this palette here, control surface, which is, it's great because this works in all kinds of applications. You can customize it. Uh, you have sliders, you have knobs, you have buttons, uh, and it's also all magnetic. So I can quickly, for example, remove things. See, for example, if I don't like this button there, I can move the button to another spot here. Uh, and it all magnetically connects and, and sends the signal. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way of working at it. And this way you can really sort of configure the sliders and buttons and all that stuff to, to the way that you like to work. So I would say having actual physical buttons is going to be key when you're color grading. Um, and here, I think I, what is it? I switched my settings. So uh, actually, this will take me to my next point. I see this little puck. Uh, that's to, to control my display up here. Both of these monitors, by the way, are from BenQ. I've been on a search. This is like the most amazing color grading monitor, 4K display. Um, there's different sizes you can get of this. And I did a full review of it. So again, I'll put a link for that in the description of this video. Uh, you guys can check out. And I just mounted it on this arm that I got on Amazon. Uh, it allows me like full articulation. I can twist it and all that stuff. Also, if I'm, for example, let's say grading and I want to show it let's say, to a client that's sitting here, uh, I can, you know, kind of, you know, pull it out there. So it's more comfortable to see. And I just put it up here, you know, above, because usually sometimes I would have like, I mean, the monitor here, my grading monitor on the side. But again, I put it up here because, again, I want to utilize this sort of corner of my office the best. So it makes sense to have it there. It's still comfortable for me to uh, to look up at it. Um, and the cool thing is it comes with the puck here. Uh, and with this puck, I can have different presets. So you can see I can have like mono. You know, I can have, for example, Adobe RGB, different different things like that, custom presets, but I can also switch. So right now, for example, I'm uh, working in DaVinci Resolve and I have the Blackmagic uh, output card uh, connected. And so I can just click here, go to my inputs and just switch to that. And now you'll notice if I go, for example, here, you see, if I scroll through it, you're going to see here the, you know, basically what I'm seeing up here in Resolve. But this is now going through the Blackmagic card. And what that means is that it's actually properly, uh, you know, the colors are properly adjusted. And that's because uh, what I did is I uh, calibrated that monitor and I calibrated it using uh, this thing. This is the eye display from x -Rite. I still use it. I always have it there because, you know, pretty much on a weekly, sometimes on bi-weekly basis, I'm going to be recalibrating my monitor because the colors do shift uh, on every monitor. So you want to make sure you do that. And I will actually calibrate both of my monitors so they both work well. Uh, and I'll, actually that maybe takes me to the next point, which is uh, many times people are asking me when you're working in DaVinci Resolve, basically how can you get a full display uh, on your second monitor so you can see it, you know, full screen. And it's actually not so simple or not as simple as, for example, you can do in some of the other editing programs. But it's actually, in a way, it's a good thing because Resolve basically forces you to get a proper, you know, output card uh, that you put inside your computer uh, that this way it can bypass the, the whole color calibration within Windows or, or Mac, depending on what system you're working on. So it bypasses all of that and it just goes straight through the card and you calibrate the display, you apply a lot that the card basically processes. And so this way you know that your colors are not going to be offset because of your uh, operating system uh, colors, uh, basically uh, calibration. But if I ever want to use this as my just sort of regular monitor when I'm, you know, working on Windows, then again, uh, I can just switch this to go back to basically to my other input. And then this way I can just use it as a, as a regular desktop kind of monitor. Uh, you'll notice I actually have another monitor here connected. Uh, and that's uh, uh, right now, it's basically just a spare monitor that I had lying around my office. It's uh, from Aperture, not the best display. But the reason why I have this here 
is uh, so that when I'm working in, in DaVinci Resolve, uh, then I can have my scopes basically in you know my vector scope, my uh, RGB parade, all that stuff on a separate display. So as I'm, for example, scrolling through the shots, this will actually update in real time. Uh, and I can kind of really, again, be more intuitive when I'm color grading, I can check here how it looks. So next thing maybe I'll talk about is kind of what's underneath this monitor. Uh, and that's actually a, a sound card from Behringer. Uh, and I just use this as my main sort of sound card. I do have obviously a built-in sound card in my uh, PC, but for like sort of proper audio recording, mixing, things like that, I just find having an external card like this just works better. So this actually allows me to first of all plug in uh, XLR microphone, which is this little guy up here that I use, let's say if I'm doing voiceovers or web streaming, things like that. Uh, and it provides phantom power. Uh, I have, you know, actual knobs here for adjusting the input levels, recording levels, things like that. I can plug my headphones up here and it actually provides XLR uh, basically connections uh, to my two speakers here, which are uh, two speakers from Sanal. Now these speakers, I know some people, like when I posted photos on Instagram, things like that, people were asking me, Tom, what are, the, what are these speakers? Can I get these? And these are, uh, I should say maybe these are studio monitors. Like they really reproduce sound really nicely. Uh, they have a tweeter up here and a, I think it's a six and a half inch um, woofer. And they're really powerful speakers. They're really heavy actually. So I kind of had to mount them, you know, there against the wall. Um, but they're, they're really good speakers, but they're not no longer available. So I don't know what happened whether the Sanal just, uh, you know, just wasn't selling enough of these or what. They also have up here independent audio level adjustments, things like that. They're great speakers, but unfortunately they're not available. So you guys won't be able to get them. But I did do a re review before of various different uh, studio monitors, uh, basically for monitoring sound when you're sound mixing and things like that. Uh, and uh, there's some other really great options out there, budget and expensive options. So. Again, check that video out. I'll provide the link for it in the description of this one. Now, quickly going back to the displays, uh, the monitor I have here on the bottom, like I said, is also BenQ widescreen curved monitor. I know I did a video before because I was kind of searching for months for like the perfect widescreen monitor uh, and I couldn't find one uh, that, that I really liked. Now, this one I think is the best option from all the ones that I've tested. Uh, because it's it's kind of a good middle ground in terms of it's great for gaming and just in general computing But it's also good for video editing has decent color reproduction now It's not as good as this BenQ monitor. This one's like you know, designed for photography, you know for video production This one is kind of again more kind of you know kind of a good middle ground where it has good refresh rate for gaming and that kind of stuff, but it's also uh, got colors that are almost as good as this this monitor but the the reason why i'm no longer concerned with it being curved which you know if you watch my video where i was looking for those monitors i kind of complained that you can't really do serious video or, or graphics work on a curved monitor because everything gets distorted well right now i don't really care because like i said it's it is nice to have that you know wider aspect ratio you have more space on your timeline and all that stuff but uh, when I'm actually judging my final graphics and see if all the lines are straight and everything, then I'll, I'll look at it up here on my monitor. As far as hard drives that I use to kind of store all of my video data, you know, audio, music files, all that, that stuff uh, for, for the work that I do, uh, there's few options that I have. One you see up here on my desk, it's the it's this hard drive from Lacey. Lacey? Lassie? Uh, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. Maybe you guys can let me know. In the comment section this is actually a surprisingly really nice uh, hard drive it's fairly fast uh, i can actually edit uh, raw files right off of this drive uh, and i like the fact that it's got uh, this built-in also card readers here on the bottom and a usb3 so i can plug in let's say my ssd or i guess in my sd cards and i can offload footage uh, footage directly on onto it uh, so i like that but that this is kind of like my smaller drive that i have just up here for immediate kind of projects that i'm editing right now but when it comes to projects that I, uh, for example, when I need to store a lot of data, uh, for example, when I'm backing up multiple projects uh, and I still want to have access to it and want to sometimes may maybe, let's say, be able to uh, read some of the bigger video files from it, um, but I don't do it on a consistent basis, then I use this big uh, network uh, storage drive and it's from uh, Synology. You can get it, you know, there's different sizes that they offer. Uh, what I like about the one from Synology is the fact that uh, you can really customize it, but it's also, if you know nothing about NAS drives uh, or how to configure them, all that stuff, 
it's damn simple with their software. Like literally you just plug in, they give you little instructions like one, two, three step. Uh, you put in, create your password, all that stuff, and you can access it anywhere on your, let's say, home network. So I can even, let's say if I want to read files off of it, or for example, if I want to access the files using one of my smart TVs, things like that, so I can just, you know, watch media files and my, my stored videos, uh, then I can do that. Plus I can access it on all of my computers in my uh, studio here and even while I'm traveling. So let's see if I'm somewhere on a remote location, but I want to have access to a certain file or something like that. Again, I can just log in and I can read all my files. So it's really, good, really nice. Uh, the one that I have, uh, it's six drives. Each one of them is eight terabytes. And for me right now, I find that to be plenty of space. Now I will probably be with time upgrading maybe to a bigger one or just another one of these uh, Synology drives. Uh, it's definitely way better than what I was using before. Before I literally had like all these little external portable drives that I had and I had a ton of these uh, and basically just plugging in and I had to search, you know, for let's see if, oh, maybe it's on this drive, that file or it's on no, this drive. And I just have to plug in and pl unplug all these drives. And it was just a real, just a, just a hustle basically. Storing on all those drives and it wasn't as secure. With the Synology system, you kind of, again, the, the software that they give you makes it very easy to keep everything organized you can do automatic backups things like that so uh check that out if you're interested in, in basically being able to store a lot of computer data video files things like that uh, and have all of that be basically network accessible and be automated for you uh, another thing i wanted to kind of show you here is uh, nothing big but it's just this usb hub i always struggle i don't know how you whether you guys have the same problem but i always find like i have too many things to plug in through the usb so uh, this one I like because it's uh, it's big, it's like you know nicely built, tough, uh, and it has a lot of ports. But it also has these ports that are just you know dedicated to just powering or charging your devices, and they're five volts at two amps. So that's kind of where I plug in my phone. Usually when I'm working, I just plug it in through here, and I know that this thing is going to get charged really quickly uh, because of those ports. And then the other ones you can actually you know if you use them to reach your hard drives and things like that. Um, so that's that's pretty much my setup in a nutshell. And as you'll notice, I put in a little fancy lighting in the back. I have my <laughs> little remote here that I'm used that I can basically, you know, turn it off on the light. I can change the color, things like that. Um, you know, again, cheap little light. I think this is like 12 bucks on Amazon uh, that I use. I have my little notepad there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's my desk. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, maybe what else? You want me to answer about my setup then, then let me know and i'll hopefully talk about it uh kind of more more detail maybe i'll concentrate on each one of these items but uh but overall i'm i'm really happy with this oh yeah this chair by the way i know some people are asking me it's not the greatest chair i got it because I, I got a deal on it uh it's kind of more like a i guess gaming chair uh it is comfortable i'm not gonna say it's not comfortable what i just find annoying with it is uh it does not this is the lowest that it goes and my other desk on the other side of my office is actually not as high as this one and there i basically cannot fit underneath the desk so uh, i wish it was able to go lower but otherwise and you know you can adjust the your you know the the armrest and things like that uh but yeah overall i find this comfortable you know when i'm working i'm usually like this um, I have, like I said, access here. I can, you know, have a lot of real estate on this uh, bottom screen for video editing uh, on my timeline and all that stuff. Uh, and then also, you know, like I said, up here, this monitor is amazing for actually being able to see your final quality. You know, I have my uh, control surfaces up here so I can easily kind of go in and tweak the colors, my exposure, things like that. But so far, I'm really happy with the setup. Like I said, I've already edited a whole bunch of projects. I finished recently a, a feature length documentary, actually, where I did some, you know, editing, color grading, uh, even sound mixing. This is actually another film that I'm working on uh, called Shark Bait. I shot this earlier this year in Ecuador and it's uh it's a shark movie so ho hopefully you guys are excited to see it i'm gonna i'm gonna release it online as soon as i can uh but yeah it's pretty much done editing but it's you know it's 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 a joy working in this and if you haven't seen actually in my previous video i actually talked about how i switched from editing in adobe premiere over the last few months and i kind of just jumped into doing everything in davinci resolve I find this application to be amazing. I guess it has a lot of advanced features, but also if you're just a beginner, you want to jump into it, it's also easy to, to learn and kind of start editing in it. So uh, great editor, you know, we can do visual effects in it, sound mixing and an amazing color grading application. So DaVinci Resolve, free plug for them. By the way, I'm not getting paid by anybody, you know, 
no company up here to do any to mention any of these things just literally this is my like i said this is my setup and then here i got my Kraków dragon from my hometown in poland so <laughs> little souvenir that i put up here but um yeah overall i'm happy with my workstation if you guys enjoyed this video uh, or if you want more information uh, then let me know in the comment section below um, don't forget to click the like button and uh, and if you want to stay up to date with the, like you know any other kind of videos like this or let's say the film you know when it's going to be released and things like that uh, then just go to my website and sign up to uh, my newsletter and that's going to be at tomantosfilms.com uh, over there you'll find a whole bunch of other things uh, anyways i'll see you guys in the next video bye